but I heard you speak uh, about the black press and how the black press had uh, informed you mm. about the Tuskegee Airmen. Mm. Is, is that how you learned about them? Well, or influenced your interest in joining this group? In the black community, there's all kind of communications. There's the communication just from knowing people, from going to meetings, uh, from being involved in the military. So we knew about the manifestations of the Tuskegee. We knew about the struggle. The black press highlights that struggle. And they highlighted when we finally got in, highlighted when the first class graduated, highlighted when Benjamin Davis took over as a commander. So that the confluence of all those things uh, contributed to my warrant to be a Tuskegee Airman. But before then, I was an aviation buff, aviation aficionado. When I was a kid, I used to make models. I, uh, when I was seven years old, I went to see Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis in the Smithsonian. And I fantasized that I could fly across the Atlantic. I made the model. I read his book, We. I wrote stories about airplanes. Wow. And then they have had the national air races with the GB race, with the one with a little dice on it, the small one. And I used to uh, read all those stories. I made those models. And uh, me and uh, my buddies, we would play flying, racing, and so on. <laughs> so that I was really wanting to fly from the time I was nine years old. Yes. And the Tuskegee Airmen made it possible. As I said, I resigned the commission because I wanted to finish college. Yes. And I was going to take my chances that uh, I was smart enough to earn a commission again if I needed to. But also, there was an opportunity to learn to fly at Tuskegee. And that was the reason why I decided I'm going to be a Tuskegee Airman. Flying is one of the greatest things, most exciting things you could do. And because I read all these books, they would have books, G8 and the Battle Aces, Bill Barnes Air Trails. And I would read those and I'd write the stories. And so I was ready for the Air Force. You certainly were. I remember when I was a child that my mother and father would take me to the Washington National Airport and we would watch the planes take off. Uh, did your parents ever take Let you to the Let me tell you the story. We would go there almost every Sunday and uh, because I had this interest. And I kept bugging my father. I want to fly in an airplane. It was segregated. They would not let blacks fly. But, as I said, he was very light-skinned. He came up with this idea. He said, I am representing the United States government, and I have two children from French West African <laughs> diplomats who want to fly. Would you fly them? <laughs> of course. They would. And he said, keep your mouth shut. Don't speak any French. Don't do anything until we get in the air. So that was my first trip, beating, wow. beating racism through the ingenuity of my father. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, that was ingenious. Yeah. He's a very ingenious guy. <laughs>